awesome project for all our feathered friends that I call Spoonerism. And the reason I call it that is because it's basically made with a spoon or one of these great big huge ladles. Now this is just a piece I found at a garage sale and um, these are just pieces that I found in the hardware store. These are called block ends. I have no idea what they do. They're for like ventilation and heating and something, but this is what you can make with them. So basically, you put your soup ladle in there, and this becomes a little feeding station for the small birds. I like to use really small black sunflower seeds because that attracts the little guys. And not so much the robins and the blue jays and birds like that, but the little teeny weeny ones. And once this is set up outside, they actually sit in the spoon and eat. It's absolutely delightful. If you're into birds, you need to make one of these. Now you're going to start this project off with ventilation block ends. Um, these are great little creatures. I, like I said, I'm not too sure what they're used for, but they've got a natural lip all the way around, so it makes it really easy to put this project together. Now, you're going to start off by using two different sizes of these block ends. These are 8x12s, and these are 8x10s. And what you're going to do is, if you like, you can clad these in copper. Now, the nice thing about using copper outside is that over time with weathering it gets that beautiful green patina so if you like to clad this in copper all you need to do is go to the metal supermarket location nearest you now they're in all major cities I know that there's two in Edmonton for sure and basically what they do is they sell scrap pieces of metal to the general public now there's no minimum so you can get as much or as little as you need now one of the products that they carry is this copper and it's called C010 copper and it's thin enough that you can cut with ordinary scissors I love this stuff because it's just so versatile and easy to work with so basically what you're going to do is you're going to measure the inside of your blocks and then you're going to cut a corresponding piece of copper to fit inside. Now you want to make it just a tiny bit smaller so that it fits in there really nice. One of the things that you might notice from cutting is that you get a little bit of a jagged edge which is going to make it difficult to glue down and make it nice and flat. All you have to do to get that nice flat edge back is grab an old magazine or any magazine and a pencil and all you do is put this surface down on a magazine you want something nice and soft and you're just gonna burnish it with your pencil you're just gonna go back and forth until you've got a nice straight flat edge again that's all you need to do now to attach this copper onto your block ends you're gonna use a simple double-sided adhesive tape so this is tape that's sticky on both sides. You're going to apply it to the entire perimeter of your copper and then you're just going to glue it down onto the inside of your block end. Now the first step that you're going to do is mark your four holes which are going to accommodate these great big huge bejeeber bolts. Now these are half inch bolts and what they're going to do is hold this whole piece together. So what you're going to do is you're going to feed a washer onto your bolt. You're going to feed it through the front of one of your units. You're going to hold your units apart with these copper couplings. These are just half inch couplings. You're going to attach the back, another washer, and then you're going to bolt the whole thing together with one of your bolts. So basically this is the apparatus that is holding your whole bird feeder together. Now what you need to do to accommodate these bolts is you need to buy yourself a drill bit big enough that's going to drill a hole that accommodates the bolt. Now I've got a half inch drill bit here and this will fit in any drill or drill press and all you have to do once you've marked your holes. Now marking the holes I chose to have the holes towards the bottom of the unit because the, fan, the roof hangs over a bit and you want to see that nice detail piece. So you can just mark out your holes wherever you want, but keep to the lower portion of your heating block. And all you have to do is drill your holes with your drill bit. Now the one thing that I noticed, if you're using the copper, if you choose to use the copper, is you've got to be really careful when you're drilling. The block end is a really sturdy piece of galvanized steel, so you can really reef on your drill bit to cut through this, but the copper is very soft and it will get absolutely chewed up and eaten away if you just reef on your drill bit to drill the holes. So what you want to do is 
clamp a little piece of wood. I've already got a pilot hole in this, but you want to clamp a little piece of wood and center it right over the hole that you're drilling. And that way, if this is firmly pressed down, when you drill through this hole, your copper is going to stay fully intact and not get chewed up by your drill bit. So that's all you have to do. The other thing that I also suggest you do is put a piece on the bottom as well when you're drilling because when you drill through something it tends to splinter on the back or have sharp edges and come out the back but if you've got this sandwiched between two pieces of wood your front is going to look as good as your back. So after you've got all your holes drilled and your copper on if you decide to go that route what you're going to do is start the process of putting this together. Now, before you actually join the pieces, you're going to take a look at your ladle and you're going to take a look at the handle and decide how big a hole you have to create for it. Some handles are perfectly round. This one was absolutely flat, so I just cut a little slit in. But you're going to have to take a look at your, the handle of your spoon to decide what kind of opening to make. And there is my opening for my spoon right there. So basically all you're going to do now is put your unit together and you're going to start with taking one of your bolts, feeding one of these washers on. Now what the washer does is it's going to hide any little imperfections you might have while you were drilling. You're going to put your copper coupling in between the two units, push it straight through, add another washer and then put your nut on the end of your bolt. Now you can tighten these with uh, pliers or vice grips, whatever you happen to have laying around. You don't need to reef on it too much because it is a fairly delicate structure. So you're just going to add your last one on the bottom and remember to put your washer on and the nut on your bolt and then pretty much you've got your structure in place. The last step is going to be feeding your ladle through and that's easily done just like so. Now um, if you find that your handle is like crazy crazy long on your ladle you can cut it off if you like but what happens is if you've got a longer handle on one side it counterbalances the weight of this little spoon when it's full. So basically it hangs straight. Now what you're going to do is take some 20 gauge wire snip off a little bit and just feed it underneath the lip on the front and underneath the lip on the back. So you're just sliding it under these two lip, lips because that's going to be how you hang this unit. Last step is you're going to take your smaller units and with the lip that's on here you're just going to clip it on and you just do so like that. If you're finding that you're not liking the angle of your roof you can just bend it or straighten it as much as you want. So that's all that needs doing on here. So once again, if you choose to stay with the galvanized look and forego all the copper, this is a very inexpensive project. Uh, you can probably do it for under $20. Now your very last step is to create a little hanger to hang this with. And we are going to, in fact, use a clothing hanger. So we've got one of these here. I like to use the darker wires because they're a little stronger than the white wires that you get on some of the clothes that you get back from the cleaners. All you're going to do is snip off the neck. So cut, cut, remove that. So you have a piece that looks like this. And you're going to straighten this out with your needle nose pliers. And you're just going to grab each end and create a little curly cue. This is best done with needle nose because you have a little more control. And all you're going to do is grab the very, very tip of your wire and bend. Move it along and bend. Keep doing this until you have a pleasing design. Now it doesn't have to be perfect right off the bat because you can play with it and straighten it out and you know make it exactly the way you want but that's the general idea and what you're going to do is one on either end. So you've got a piece that looks like this, squeeze it together, feed it inside your little wire that you've attached and voila! Fill it up with birdseed Take it outside and watch those little guys sing for their dinner. Come on, let's take this outside and hang it up and see how they like it. I'm just about to fill my bird feeder, the spoonerism feeder. Now, what you want to do if you want to attract the smaller birds to your yard is you want to use these small black sunflower seeds. These are perfect for the little guys and it also doesn't attract the squirrels as much or the larger birds. And really, all you have to do is fill up your little ladle, 
a couple times. Make sure it's nice and full so that all the birds have a good dinner. And that's all there is to it. Now you'll notice that I've got it hanging in a tree. You want to do that. You want to give the birds a little bit of protection so they're not out in the elements where everyone can see them. They feel a little cozier and a little safer in the boughs of a tree. Now this particular feeder is squirrel proof, which is awesome. So little guys can have a great time singing for their dinner.